So once I added your RSS feed to our site, every single article that's published on Vox.com is getting sent through a feed and we're just like automatically creating a video for it. <laughs> yeah. That is so crazy. Every single article through our feed. Every single article, so. This is Wibbits. It's one of the companies that's automating news video production. You might call this the robot that's coming for my job. So this article, um, our algorithm will just intelligently summarize it into just a quick, you know, 30 second to one minute video. Um, and then based on the, you know, keywords in the article, it's gonna match relevant media to it. It's pretty impressive when you think about all the ways it could get confused. In the beginning, it was very rough. People with the same names uh, would confuse it. You know, Turkey, the country, and Turkey, the animal, uh, would be a, another example. Their product was built with machine learning algorithms, and it became more accurate over time. The result is a video made in a few seconds that's not drastically different from what a human would make in a few hours, given the same constraints. Wibbits is part of a rapidly growing industry of so-called AI-powered products. The number of companies mentioning artificial intelligence in their earnings calls has skyrocketed in the past three years. But the truth is that the term artificial intelligence isn't very well defined. Well, what happens with AI is that initially lots of things are called artificial intelligence. I mean, you, you know, it used to be that expert systems, the kind of systems that fly airplanes, were called artificial intelligence. And then once they're working in the routine and everyone you know, takes them for granted, then they're not called AI anymore. Right now when people talk about AI, they're mostly talking about machine learning, a subfield of computer science that dates back to at least the 1950s. And the methods that are popular today aren't fundamentally different from algorithms invented decades ago. So why all the interest and investment right now? I asked Manuela Veloso, the head of the machine learning department at Carnegie Mellon. You have to understand that there is something very important about these past years, is data. We became, we humans became collectors of data, Fitbits, GPSs, pictures. I mean, we, I mean, look how much credit card purchases, how much data is around. Certain machine learning algorithms really thrive on big data, as long as computers have the processing power to handle it, which they do now. If computers are the cannon and the internet is gunpowder, these are the fireworks, and they have only just begun. In his book, Pedro Domingos offers a nice, simple way of understanding supervised machine learning. He says every algorithm has an input and an output. The data goes into the computer, the algorithm does what it will with it, and out comes the result. Machine learning turns this around. In goes the data and the desired result, and out comes the algorithm that turns one into the other. The algorithms are trained to find statistical relationships in the data that allow it to make good guesses when presented with new examples. That means we no longer have an easy rule for what kinds of tasks computers can and cannot do. You know, 10 years ago, I could have said with confidence, we know how this works. To computerize something, you need to understand all the steps, then you script the steps and get a dumb machine to do it, you know, and just follow mechanistically the pr process you would have followed. But now we have machines, and I shouldn't say we, I don't make them, uh, but uh, people have developed machines that, that learn from data. And so that makes it harder to say what set of jobs are going to become substituted, readily substituted by automation, and which will be complemented. A study by the McKinsey Global Institute gets at this question by looking at the many tasks that make up 800 different occupations. And they grouped those tasks into seven categories, three that are highly susceptible to automation with currently demonstrated technologies, and four that are not. Things like managing people. Uh, they include things like creativity. They include things like decision-making or judgment and caring work that requires empathy or human interaction uh, with, with, an with an emotional content associated with it. Those are much harder things to automate. The report concluded that while most jobs include some tasks that can be automated, less than 5% of U.S. occupations can be fully automated. So this idea of occupations and jobs changing may actually be a bigger effect than the question of jobs disappearing, although of course there are some jobs that will disappear or at least decline. That's because most jobs are made up of a bunch of different tasks and most of today's AI can only do one task. 
Don't get me wrong, they can be really good at that task. A deep neural network watched 5,000 hours of BBC news with captions, and now it can read lips better than human professionals. And machine learning algorithms trained on images of tumors can predict lung cancer survival better than human pathologists. The mistake is to assume that these focused applications can add up to a more general intelligence, or that they learn like we do, which is simply not the case. When they get the right answer, it's tempting to assume they understand what they see. Only when they make a mistake do we get a glimpse at how different their process is from our own. It's pattern recognition masquerading as understanding. That's why researchers can easily trick a learning algorithm into mislabeling a picture. A lot of machine learning at this point is very superficial and very brittle. It's based on immediately observable features, which may or may not be essential uh, to what's going on. Last year, director Oscar Sharp produced a short film that was written by a neural network trained on sci-fi movie scripts. The principle is completely constructed of the same time. <laughs> it's all about you to be true. You didn't even watch the movie with the rest of the base. I don't know. I don't care. I know. It's great. It makes no sense. Because it doesn't have what a five-year-old child has, which is an abstract model of how the world works, why things happen, or what a story is. And why should it? We evolved these things over millions of years. It's a lot that it can do, much more than before. But I mean, you, we humans are amazing, I think. We are very broad, see? AI applications will keep getting better. Robot voices used to sound like this. Language is more than just feelings. Now they can sound like this. The Blue Lagoon is a 1980 American romance and adventure film directed by Randall Kleiser. Which means Wibbits will soon be able to offer natural sounding narration. Algorithms are also starting to analyze video frames. IBM trained a system to select the scenes for a movie trailer. Skip, don't go in there, okay? No, what? Don't you go down there, Skip! So instead of just pulling generic clips, Wibbits might be able to pull specific ones. But there's no clear path toward a more human-like intelligence, which includes common sense, curiosity, and abstract reasoning. AI uh, is as good as the content that goes through it. Uh, so you can't really expect AI to do magic, uh, which some people expect it to do. Machine learning algorithms can translate 37 languages, but they don't know what a chair is for. They're nothing like us, and that's what makes them such a powerful tool. Wibbits will never make this video, but AI could help me make a better one.